So what say you? Should Christians sit out this election or should they vote? Well, let's jump into this conversation and find out. So there is a lot of talk of Christians sitting out this election. And when you press them a bit further, you usually find out that it's more about personal preference. Like, I don't like either one of the candidates than anything else. But I got a news flash. That may validate how many Christians feel. And hey, I get it. I felt the same way. And even right now, there's not a lot of candidates that I'm like gun ho about. But my friend, you and I need to be reminded that it's not about personal preference when we go to the ballot box, but about policies and moral issues that you and I believe should be legislated in America. So here are three simple reasons why you as a Christian need to not, to not only care about November 3rd, but that you need to vote in this election. Here's the first reason. Politics and faith are inseparable. Politics and faith are inseparable. We need to understand that simple fact, my friends. You know, Jesus calls you and me as his followers, as disciples of Christ to be the salt and light in the world. Why? Because Jesus is the truth and he says he's the light of the world. Notice we are not to be the salt and light in our, just in our family or, you know, like in the privacy of our home or when we go to church, but in the world, we are as Christians to engage the culture. We are to be a part of the political process. Again, not combatively, but we are to be generous. We are to be wise and we are to engage in these discussions with truth and in love. As Christians, our moral duty is to be a part of the democratic system and to vote for candidates who are representing morals and ideals that will preserve our most cherished freedoms. You know, a prophet who comes to mind whose faith in office greatly impacted the political climate of his day is Daniel. Remember Daniel? He didn't just sit idly by and let the government prevent him and his people from praying to God. No, he spoke up and he challenged the very powers of the reigning kings of Babylon. What do you think would have happened if Daniel decided to remain silent? What will happen in our country when Christians allow personal preference override legislating policies that will protect our religious freedoms? Which leads me to my second point as to why Christians need to vote. You must preserve and protect religious freedom. One of the most effective ways, my friends, to ensure that we do this is to vote for officials who will not only acknowledge God, that doesn't mean they're a Christian, but acknowledge there's a higher power. And as a result, they will not infringe on our God-given rights. Politicians today that we need to be voting for, my friends, hold to natural rights because they hold to not just law and order, but they believe that there is a order of absolute truth that far exceeds even the temporal government that we have in America. You know, it is evident in scripture that religious freedom is a gift of God. And therefore, when you and I look at the human rights that we have, they're fundamental. They're undeniable. And no one has a right to strip us of the dignity and the intrinsic value that you have and that I have. When Christians take for granted of their religious freedoms, at some point, my friend, those freedoms will no longer exist. And once our liberties are lost, it is next to impossible to recover them. That's why Christians need to vote in this election. And the third point is this, it is the moral duty and responsibility of every Christian to defend and protect the unborn's life. You know, there's a powerful verse in the Bible in Proverbs 31, eight through nine, where it says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. Being an advocate of an unborn child's life is a biblical principle that ought to guide every Christian and how they vote for candidates and advance legislation. My friend, if you don't vote, how is that fighting to reduce the number of abortions taking place in the United States today? You see, my friends, when you and I take those three examples, number one, that, that our faith and politics are inseparable. Number two, that we are to protect and preserve our religious freedoms. And number three, we are to be the voice 
for the voiceless, that is the life of the unborn in that womb. When, when we take those things into account and we become more informed and we are actively engaging in local, state, and federal elections, we will have a far greater chance to not only strengthen families, build up communities, defund abortions, and advance legislation that will benefit the well-being of every citizen. So those are just three simple reasons, three examples as to why you as a Christian should care and vote in 2020. So my friends, if you like this video, please make sure that you you click that like button, hit the bell to get notifications when I put out videos just like this one. And if you've never subscribed to our channel, man, I would love it if you subscribe to our channel. I want to be able to invest in this channel to bring God's truth, to reinforce biblical truth to you, to help sharpen you so that you can stand strong, my friend, no matter the cost. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate your support. And until next time, Keep standing strong, my friends.